Hello, subscribers, patrons, fans, followers, supporters, and generally anyone who happens to stumble across my videos. Welcome to another edition of How to Art with me, Johnston Blackhorse, the one and only. <sighs> okay, that's enough. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Um, in this week's How to Art, <clears throat> We're going to uh, discuss how to uh, make uh, your characters and incorporate them into your um, your backgrounds. And, you know, how, how, how do you make your characters uh, mesh into backgrounds and such. So, as you can see here, I have, like, uh, this uh, previous commission that I made of uh, a couple of characters. Oh, shoot, I should have pulled up this information a while ago. Um... Oh, I don't even remember where, what game these characters belong to. I am so out of touch with the gaming culture and a lot of reality in general. My 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 thumb isn't on the pulse of society nowadays. I'm just so busy just making my own ends meet. <laughs> anyway, uh, these are two uh, female characters, uh, lowly versions of the two female characters who have been... Um, uh, drawn smaller and younger and whatever, <clears throat> and um, they're put placed in a post-apocalyptic uh, setting, as you can see from the background. Just kind of pull it up a little closer that you may see it. And um, one of the um, requests or suggestions that was made of me is um, for one of my how to art videos is how do I um, make my characters mesh with the uh, with the background. <clears throat> so, in doing this piece, like I, first I drew the characters, and um, just uh, making sure the characters felt grounded. So um, that was one of the first things that I drew. And afterwards, I uh, drew this rough sketch for the background. And um, let me pull out my my nifty little light box so that you can uh, so that you can see this and as you can see here <clears throat> like um, the, these light pencil blue pencil sketches what I did is I utilized this light box and um, traced the uh, foreground characters first in blue pencil as you can see and I go, went in with blue pencil and just started um, making this background just all the while just keeping these uh, outlined blue pencil sketches in mind as I just sketched out the whole environment. Now for the background, like um, I stated in the previous video when I started talking about this piece, I utilized somewhat of a four-point perspective as you can see here. Now, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, point perspective and whatnot, uh, one point perspective, if I just kind of just utilize this like small area as an example, you have your one point here where everything kind of get, gets pulled into the vanishing point. So uh, all the buildings around here and the bus and the, well, like, not quite the vehicles because um, I drew them as somewhat a, as a, at a skewed angle just to give more of an impression of a post-apocalyptic world where there's just uh, some chaos here and there. But anyway, <clears throat> one point perspective just revolves around the one point where everything just kind of, it's the, it's your vanishing point where everything, um, all the perspective lines are drawn. So as you can see there, that, that's your one point perspective. For two point perspective, I kind of focus in on just like one side of this and just you focus in on uh, one vanishing point and off to the side here if you can imagine it I have like another vanishing point like way off in this general direction so I, I I imagine that there's a vanishing point over here and I just kind of eyeball some of this perspective going off in that angle and as you can see from po will possibly see from the uh, blue sketch lines I drew like a lot of lines to signify or just uh, gesture toward that very distant vanishing point. So that's two-point perspective. Now a three-point perspective, just utilize this whole top part here. So we got the one vanishing point in the middle, 
and then the two uh, vanishing points on the side. So as I explained the vanishing point that I suggest with these lines here, I did the same thing on this side. So all these buildings you can see are just skewing off to this side, like um, suggesting that there's a vanishing point way off in this general region over here. So that's three-point perspective, and as you can see, it just um, kind of gives like a, somewhat of a sense of realism, um, that sense of perspective that just kind of kind of pulls you into that background. Now, four-point perspective, you can't really see it in this entire piece, but like the fourth vanishing point, it's like I have one, two, and three vanishing points here. There's a third vanishing point that I placed right here at the the, the foot of the characters. Now, it's for the characters, the, the two characters themselves in the foreground, they're the ones who follow that vanishing point, just like that's somewhat uh, at their feet here, or just like a little, little off the page here. But as you can see, like I drew them in a sense, just kind of following that one vanishing point here. And for the little bits of debris and stuff that you see on the ground, I keep that vanishing point at their feet in mind while all the while keeping uh, um, my mind um, focused on there's a vanishing point over here so some of the debris and things that you see on the ground more or less coincide with these two vanishing points and if I had more of like a um, like a solid um, <clears throat> um, more more rigid structures such as like the buildings or vehicles in this general area here, I would make them adhere to all the vanishing points that you, or all the vanishing points that I had pointed out. But seeing as how it's just like a bunch of debris, I didn't have to pay that much attention, but just uh, keep in mind that, okay, since there's a vanishing point down here, then we're obviously getting like a top-down view when we're focusing on this portion of the image. So that's how I drew a lot of the debris and the rocks and some of the grass that you see here. It gives the impression that um, you're somewhat uh, the the viewer just kind of like looking down on this like little little area here, but whereas when you get to the top of the the piece, you you I, I give the impression or sense that you're kind of just uh, gazing off into the distance as you look in this region here. <clears throat> so in a sense, like um, kind of giving it that aspect that um, you're looking off in the distance over here, but the, at the same time you're somewhat looking down on these two characters as they're looking up at you. So I'm gonna go about maybe a rough, um, rough drawing just to um, take all of that into account. But um, since this is gonna be somewhat more of like a little light tutorial, I probably won't give it like all these perspective points as I did this piece. So uh, that's that's the explanation of how I went about uh, making this. So let's uh, let's start with a, a brand new piece, shall we? Ah, paper, blue pencil, sharpener. So um, I have no idea what I'm going to draw at this particular moment because uh, I sometimes I just don't plan ahead for these things. <laughs> I planned. Uh, as uh, I planned a little bit ahead, just like thinking of what I wanted to say when when explaining this piece, but right now I'm just kind of gonna I'm just gonna wing it. Let's let's wing it. So um, I guess trying to think of a, um, something that incorporates a foreground character and uh, somewhat of a little bit of a background, but I don't want to make it too complex. So, if we're going to draw, like, this character, he's definitely going to be interacting or just, like, in the setting itself. So, let's see. Let's, uh... Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Thinking, thinking maybe. Maybe. I 
I don't know, something really simple. I'm gonna, I guess I'll draw a bed here. I'm going to put a little bit of a shelf right up here. Maybe some, just some character. Lying in bed, maybe he's, he or she is texting on the phone. Just relaxing, chilling out. I'm trying to think of the perspective in my mind as I as I draw this. Of course I'm not you don't see me like drawing any vanishing points or anything. I'm just kind of winging it, sketching it out. <clears throat> And draw the this device closer to this character's face just to give the impression that he's like really drawn into maybe an app that he's playing with or fo really focused in on like whatever text he's typing out. I guess since I said it's a it's a he so often, like I'll just make this a male character. Be sketching this in somewhat of a cartoony fashion. You know, I I, I don't break out my cartoony style all that often, especially in some of my more recent works. So yeah, let's make this somewhat as a uh, cartoony as possible. That sounds good, right? Kind of got like a few pillows back here. He's just chilling out, enjoying his Sunday afternoon or something. Kind of give him a mop top. A little bit of an unkempt, unkempt hairdo. Why not? Give him someone like some 
tired looking eyes just give him the impression that he's really indifferent and just kind of really focused in on on what he's doing Gonna put another character up here. Just flying through the air. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a female character. Yeah. Because why not? Here she is about to deliver the people's elbow on his solar plexus. Put that elbow out there. make her somewhat of a buxom lass perhaps she's a friend who comes over often to to watch movies play video games or just wail on this unassuming fellow right now Put some lines and ruffles in her clothing, giving the illusion of movement. And draw her so she's somewhat um, got got her target in sight. Give her a ponytail and have that flowing in the in the air. to signify the direction from which she has uh, launched herself. Give her a real determined 
set of eyebrows. Laser point focus in her eyes. Somewhat of a cute button in the nose and uh, kind of a mischievous grin. Because of the utter annihilation she's about to deliver. upon her hapless male compatriot. Okay, well, let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom, zoom. All right, let's uh, maybe flesh out his room a little more. Let's see, kind of give him a little nightstand. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm drawing the basic shape of. Uh, where the nightstand is going to be sitting because from there I'm going to draw some of these perspective lines up from the floor because um, in doing that that uh, helps you ground your objects in in your 3D environments that you are that you're drawing let's make that uh, somewhat the same same level of his bed or just a little higher and um, I'm eyeballing the whole perspective here so like um, since a lot of the, the, the vanishing lines they kind of go off into a, a space like beyond the edge of the ed edge of the paper so I'm doing my best to just kind of keep keep that in mind as I'm just kind of sketching this out Let me end this nightstand somewhere like right around here. Hmm. Should I give this thing more drawers? Yeah, I think I'll give it more drawers. Sometimes I have difficulty pronouncing certain words like drawers. When I was a kid, I used to pronounce it dwarves because that's how I heard it. Dwarves. So like, what, like the, the little people? Dwarves? Like, put put your put your socks away in the in the dwarfs. Yeah, I when I was a kid, I had a bad habit of mishearing things. So for the longest time, when I was a kid, I thought it was dwarfs. The the dresser dwarfs. Put your clothes away in the dresser dwarfs. Put the put the utensils in the in the top dwarf. In the in the kitchen over by the sink. 
that that's how I heard it, and so that's how I <laughs> that's how I'd pronounce it. I don't know when I learned to um, say it correctly, but I don't think it was for a while. I, I, I was a pretty young kid then, so I think uh, my mispronunciation would have been chopped up to um, like a like a childish type speech impediment. You know, like when you're a kid, you just you're always saying words wrong or improperly. But my issue is that I miss I mishear words and then just kind of just carry it on from there. I hope this is helping um, whoever it was that uh, asked for this video. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like, um, well, for, for this piece, like uh, since the character is interacting with the background itself, I drew the background first just to get a rough idea and then drew the character in it. Whereas the last piece, like the, since the characters weren't um, interacting with the background at all and I wanted the characters to be somewhat of like the focal piece of the entire thing, I drew the characters first and did the background as like a... Um, not, I guess you could say afterthought. I, I don't know if you could say that. Could you say that? Uh, well, well, like uh, I, I drew the uh, characters first because I wanted them to be the focal point, and afterwards, like I started sketching out the background on a separate sheet of paper. But in this piece, like I'm drawing, like um, uh. I'm, the 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 character is interacting with the background, so in a sense, like uh, when you have a scenario like that, you somewhat want to like draw both of them in the same in the same piece or like at the same time. So I think it all depends on like the type of image that you want to do. Like for like I said for the first uh, for the example that I had like um. I drew the characters first, but in this one, I'm drawing both elements at the same time, just to make sure it all all meshes together in that sense. Because in a way, the background could be a character in and of itself, just kind of giving more more backstory or uh, more details on on who lives there or like uh, what what the environment is um, I'm gonna doodle in maybe some anime figurines so I gotta girl in a short skirt here at the top who's wielding an overly oversized ridiculous sword <laughs> it's not like uh, any any anime in particular it's just uh, just uh, thinking of common anime tropes and just like putting them in a figure but uh, giving the sense that this this guy is a anime enthusiast who collects uh, anime figures and whatnot so in this second figure, I'm drawing like a, a female character taking a knee, wielding dual pistols. Yeah. OK. 
because she's a gun girl. And maybe, I don't know, I'm going to phone it in on, on the rest of the, <laughs> on the rest of the shelf and just like draw like a, like a collection of manga. There we go. With anime figurine book holders. Busty, busty busts. So it's going to be a bust uh, top top half figure of a female character with uh, with fairly large breasts and they're going to be on both sides except you're not going to be able to see this other bust since it's obscured by books but you will see her bust <laughs> Duh, that's a lame joke why did you even say it I'm sorry it just kind of slipped out Ugh. Um, I don't know. Throwing some, throwing some posters. I don't know what about. I'm going to just draw a generic skull up here. Maybe it's a band poster that features a skull with cat ears and whiskers. Maybe it's a female punk band or something that he follows. It's a smiling skull. Yeah. And right below it is flo floating a spike collar of some sort. And just more obscure posters here and there lining the area. And shade in the under the bed. Maybe put uh, I don't know a little bit of a trash bin up here just to kind of close in this area, just to give the sense that um, that it's in a closed-in space, his room. Let me dress up the floor a little bit. Got some socks at the foot of his bed. And, uh, oh, I know what I just should have put there. Okay, let's erase the trash bin. Instead, Gonna put in like a little guitar stand. Make it a bass. I would detail more of the, the, the posters, but I think you get the gist of what's going on. And uh, I guess since we have some time, uh, we're... Oh.
Ugh. Let's go ahead and throw in some inks. I'm going to try to use my chisel. Uh, chisel. <laughs> chisel. Uh, chisel. Um, inking pen. So as you can see, or I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that. Like it's got this chisel type tip. And just see how this works. Um, depending on how you hold it, you can get like a, a decent, like a um, thin line for, oh, whoa, the, the page is bowing a little bit bowing out toward me, so I kind of screwed up a little bit over there, but whatever, it's like a little bit of a sketch. Anyways, anyway, as I was saying, depending on how you hold it, you can get like a kind of a small, fine, thin line, or you can get like a thick line when you, when you need to. Just a All depends on how you hold it, what what angle you um, use it with. So since uh, this is going to be somewhat in shadow, just kind of give it a little bit of thick line. Did I get a message? Freelancer, leave me alone! Leave me alone, freelancer! Sorry, I, I signed up for this uh, freelancing website, and it's been nothing but a pain for me. <laughs> um... Sorry, I'm, I'm clicking around right now. I'm checking out uh, my YouTube. I'm checking out my bids. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Bids are doing good. Getting a lot of comments here on Ink Bunny. Cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, Freelancer is a freelancing website that I signed up for when I first got out of prison, hoping I could just uh, make some money somehow or just get some work in some form, in a, form or another. But uh, it never panned out. And, you know, because at the time I didn't have a gallery or anything. But now that um, Patreon seems to be like really. Um, working out for me. I have no reason for this uh, freelancer thing to keep going. You, I, I, I don't know why I don't just unsubscribe to the thing, but I'm just... I'm just so freaking lazy. What's the matter with me? I just can't find the energy or the time to just unsubscribe to one particular website. It's ridiculous. Uh, we'll get around to it eventually. I'm just always procrastinating. Pick up.
Do, 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 do. Oh, why did I not put on some music earlier? That just totally slipped my mind. I felt like it was a little too quiet. Jeez. Some um, copyright free, royalty free music to put in the background. Just something mellow to lose myself in. Wow, these, these figurines are just really small, so I'm going to have to break out the 0 .05. Oh, thanks to all the guys who uh, participated in my first... Um, stream video like uh, like I said in the video I was merely going about setting it up because um, I, I put it off because when figuring out how to set it up like it told me it had to go through several processes actually those several, several processes were just a matter of um, um, I guess uh, making sure my content was uh, uh, approved, like um, for uh, public consumption, I guess. So my channel would have uh, gone through a 24-hour approval process, and that in itself sounded like it was going to take a while. So I just kind of didn't. Uh, didn't want to bother just based on that alone. And the second thing was um, it would need a phone number to verify my account. And I'm of the whole mindset is like, I'm not giving my number to a machine. So I just figured I'd get around to it some other day. And today, when I figured, you know what, I'm going to figure out this uh, YouTube live thing and just just go ahead and go through the the process of setting this up but apparently through some of my other actions in like making YouTube videos or setting up a uh, Twitter and other other accounts I had somehow uh, 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 through happenstance went through the process already so when I click the let's let's get started button or whatever it was all of a sudden I found that I was um, streaming and that was a pleasant little surprise like oh all the steps that I thought I'd have to take have already been taken I don't know when I made those steps but hey let's let's start streaming and um, yeah it was pretty fun like yeah it was like empty at first because no one knew about my stream but I posted around a little bit and after a while like uh, a few of you guys came and uh, I think at, at, at most, we had like uh, seven people 
in my stream. <laughs> but hey, it was fun. Like I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys showed up and enjoyed the the time that I I drew there and asked, asked and you got to ask a lot of your questions. And I hope I I answered them. Like uh, I tried to answer them to the best of my abilities. And um, it was a pretty neat conversation. So for those guys who participated, thank you. You guys were, you guys were fun to talk with. You know, just uh, really give me gave me that sense of uh, uh, belonging or community that I don't uh, don't quite have anymore because I just for for the most part I just don't bother to socialize anymore just because I'm I'm worried of facing that that. Uh, that overbearing stigma or like um, just having to constantly explain myself and my situation and um, just being able to in a sense converse with you guys was pretty fun so thanks for joining and thanks for the conversation I mean yeah I, I'm hoping to do it more often in the future Sweet. Let's uh, continue this inking. No, I kind of tweaked her smile. Oh well. All right. What was that? Oh. I totally gave this skull. Screwed up teeth. I gave it gave it an odd number of teeth. I shouldn't have done that. That that's incorrect. Huh? 
Oh, that's how you're going to walk. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, I still got to do a. What, a, what is it that I still have to do? I've got to do another video. I can't remember what. It, oh, sketchbook tour. I got another sketchbook tour to do. All right, and there we have it. Not one, but two characters with the background. Oh, let me uh, put in like a few details here. Yeah, let me put in a few more wrinkles on his shirt. Man, that guy's about to totally get destroyed. Hope you haven't eaten yet. But yeah, there we go. Wow. When I look at it on the, the little video feed I have here, it's, uh, it almost feels like it could just fall right into the background there. Just the weird, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just tooting my own horn. Uh, never mind that. I, I should, I should shade the end of the underside of his bed too. There we go. There we go. Oh, why didn't I put little details on this nightstand, like an, an alarm clock or a lamp? That would have been nice. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, well. Anyway, there you have it. I don't feel like I need to sign this piece since I did it on copy paper. <laughs> but there you have it. Uh, I hope that was helpful for um, those who wanted to, to view that. And uh, uh, if you like this video, then give me a thumbs up if you want. Uh, if you want to stay in um, in the loop on like when I uh, release more videos like this, uh, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to uh, support more videos and the production of more art from me, then um, why don't you, uh, you check out my Patreon page. I got a lot of free content there for anyone to check out. If you like what you see, then go ahead and click that Patreon button and become a patron at either level 1, level 2, or level 3. Level 1 comes with full-size scan downloads of a lot of the art that I release. 
uh, level two comes with that and also downloadable uh, like uh, files such as Photoshop, After Effects, and Flash. And with those, you can peel back the layers and see what goes into making some of the uh, art and animations that I do make. And you can also play around with the files on your own time and maybe like uh, make a like little version for yourself to post. And if you do, just uh, remember to pay credit where credit is due and link back to me. If you don't, I'd really appreciate it. Or if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't, you know, it's it's no big deal. It's not like I'm going to come busting down your door or anything. Um, uh, but uh, if Patreon isn't your thing and you still want to support me and toss a few bucks my way, I also have a GoFundMe account. So you can uh, go donate on that. And I'm also, um, oh, uh, if you want to, uh, I guess, uh, read up on my whole backstory and everything and how I got here, I do have an autobiographical blog, and um, you can check that out as well and read up on my wacky adventure and, like, my travel through the legal system and prison process, yeah. And, um... I'm also a member of DeviantArt for Affinity and Ink Bunny, and I'll also leave those links in the description below. And um, I have recently joined social media, so I, I, I now have a Facebook, I got a Twitter, and I have a um, Instagram. I don't know what Instagram does, <laughs> but uh, I, I have that just for because I think I. I joined all those websites just because I, I was really drunk over the weekend and I just went ahead and joined all those websites to try to gain more exposure from my Patreon page and all of my art and everything like that. So anyway, um, I guess I'll link all of that somehow. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching this video and I hope you had a blast. Uh, it was really cool making this video and it was really cool talking to some of you guys earlier. And I uh, hope to um, make uh, more. Well, I gotta get. I gotta get to making this next uh, um, sketchbook tour. So yeah. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you had fun, and I'll check you guys later. Sweet.